Hello trainers, Professor Palm here, and I'm back for my little vacation. You see, March meltdown was fun, but boy was it hot. I really needed to cool down, so I decided I was going to take a trip. So I went to Churchester, which is in the Gala region, and I had a great time up there. Such a nice place to be. I even met the gym leader, Melanie. She was pretty nice. She even gave me one of her lead cards. But being up there and seeing kids having snowball fights, as well as build snowman, gave me an idea what to do for this episode. So, do you want to build a snowman? Or do you want to find a Yeti? That's right, today we're going to talk about Snover and Obama Snow. Thank Arceus that these two Pokemon are not ready for battle, because if they were, they would have their ability Snow Warning activate and have it hailing. Now, seeing the snowfall is very beautiful, and being in the snow is very nice as well. But what's not nice is having to clean up all this hail in my lab. And also, I really don't want anything to get ruined, as there's a lot of stuff here that the hail could destroy. So, without further ado, why don't we get into it? The snow is about to melt, and spring's about to start. So, before winter ends, let's talk about these Pokémon. And, let's start with the little snowman himself, Snover. Do you want to catch a snowman? Do you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to say that because I just wanted to be funny. But yeah, actually, uh, our snow for here represents both a snowman and a Christmas tree. Oh, I'm sorry. In the real terms, a Christmas tree is called a fir tree. If you look very carefully, you can see that the top of Snover's head represents where the leaves are and the top part. I also like to think of it as a big snow hat, mainly the one that Kyle Broflosky wears from South Park. And if you look down at Snover's lower body, you can see the trunk as well as where the stump goes to. As you can tell, my Snover is a male because a female has an extra white layer before you hit the stumpy leg part. As you can see on Snover's back, there are two little fir trees sticking out and it's got an adorable little fir tree tail. Some people say that this is for camouflage. However, that would be a lie because Snover really like humans. Snover are actually very social Pokemon. However, since they prefer the cold, they usually live very high in the mountains with other ice Pokemon and Obama Snow being their leaders. But when Snover see human footprints or boot tracks in the snow, these Pokemon get very excited in fact, they even circle around the snow tracks and try to figure out where it's going. It's like playing a little game of hide-and-seek. So, Snover is looking for us, and it thinks that we're hiding. In fact, Snover are very social around people that there were tales back in the olden days of Hisui that in old villages, Snover would walk in, it would bond great with children, and it would love to make children laugh, and it would even play with them as well. During the hotter parts of the year, Snover retreat high into the mountains, but during the cooler parts of the year, Snover migrate from the top of the mountain to the bottom. The reason why is that since these Pokemon are a grass ice type, they have a times four weakness to fire. And similar to snowmen in real life, heat and ice just don't mix very well. Since Snover are based off of fir trees, during the springtime, these Pokemon grow berries. They are grown right onto the front side of it. These berries are very bitter, but they're very cold and delicious, and they are considered a delicacy in Galar, especially in Churchester. However, wild Darumaka are very, very fond of these berries, making it very hard for most people to ever take a bite of these berries. So, if you get one, you're in luck, as these berries are hard to come by. However, despite the fact that these Darumaka take the berries, Snover are very kind-hearted and are very generous when giving these berries to anyone. As you know, Snover is a very social Pokemon, despite it not having a lot of contact with humans. It does like being with humans, playing games, as well as giving berries and making new friends. However, when this Pokemon evolves, it prefers a lone wolf kind of mountain life, and they become a leader of a pack. So... Let's have our little Snover evolve, and let's put the snow on full flurry and welcome the Big Yeti himself, Obama Snow. The Yeti itself, Obama Snow, is known as two different names to mountain climbers and hikers. They like to call it the Ice Monster and the Abominable Snowman. 
As you can tell by its body, it's covered in a lot of shaggy white fur, having tufts on its chest and some tufts on its face that look like a beard. As you can tell, mine's a male because a female has a longer chest tuft. Also, since we're on the subject of tufts, I love that little tuft-like beard it has on its face covering its mouth. It makes me think of Santa Claus. Looking from behind, you can see that Abomasnow has four little fir trees on its back, a fir tree looking tail, and little back tufts as well. I have to say, one of the funniest things you can think of is that looking at Abomasnow, it looks like an avalanche just happened on a mountain and those trees just got out unscathed. Unlike Snover, Abomasnow like a nice quiet life in the mountains, being far away from humans. However, when flowers start to bloom in the winter, this Pokemon seems to be very at peace and doesn't mind the company of humans. But when these flowers finally pass away, Abomasnope return back high into the mountains and retreat to their isolation. When Abomasnow is angry, it can whip up a blizzard in just one second. Also, its ice power is so strong that without the ability Snow Warning, this Pokemon can cover an entire area in a blanket of snow in under one minute. If the blizzard doesn't work to scare off anything that angers it, it will use physical force with Wood Hammer, its signature move. Since those hands it has are very, very strong, and this Pokemon can lift a lot of weight, do not try to mess around with it, because you will be crushed to a pulp by this Pokemon in one second. Abomasnow tend to not be social around humans, but they are very social around other Ice-type Pokemon, especially other Abomasnow, Mamoswine, and Snover. In fact, Abomasnow often act as pack leaders when they all live high in the mountains. The reason they live so high up there is because, being a grass ice type Pokemon, heat is not their friend and they have a times four weakness to fire. These Pokemon are also very protective of the younger ones, as they often chase away Galarian Darumaka who try to steal the berries. While Abomasnow are not the most fond of the berries, they don't like the idea that others that are not welcomed steal from them. Snover and Abomasnow sure give a new meaning to frostbite and the term strong as a tree because while one is tough as a tree, the other one, based off a tree but being a yeti, definitely does do a ton of damage with its wood hammer. It's kind of interesting to think that they're both pack members, that one of them decides to be very social and likes to make new friends, while the other one isn't fond of strangers and prefers to stay high in the mountain. If you're hiking up any snowy mountain, make sure you have a fire type Pokemon handy because that snow warning ability isn't a lot of fun when you're getting hailed on, especially with the fact that how cold it can be up there and finding heat isn't very helpful, especially since heat would chase off these Pokemon, scaring them. While Snover and Abomasnow have a major weakness to fire, being a times four weakness as they're a grass ice type Pokemon, they do have a very good trade off and that's the ability snow warning, which causes it to hail. Similar to Drizzle, Drought, and Sandstream, it automatically cloaks the field in a weather condition. However, unlike Drizzle and Drought, just like Sandstorm, Hail stays for a while, and also, it makes other Pokemon take damage. Not just that, Hail also boosts Ice-type moves. And, if you add a Never Melt Ice, you can get an extra boost for your Ice-type moves. So think about this. You may have a major weakness out there, but you have a mega boost for all your ice type Pokemon almost immediately if you start with either of these Pokemon. How cool is that? That's definitely a great competitive move. Are you a fan of the Snowman and the Yeti? Or does the times four weakness to fire type moves repulse you? Also, if you're a competitive person, do you like the idea of having a bonus times four move with the combination of Snow Warning and Never Melt Ice? I'd love to know. Before I end, I want to say a huge thanks to Tecranova on Etsy for my Ghost Fox Within shirt. If you like the shirts like this that I wear, you can check her up on Etsy. She's an incredible artist. She does amazing designs. And if you like these shirts and want to buy them, please give her the business she deserves. I may not be sponsored, but I still want to give her a big thanks for all she does. So if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like. If you have an idea about a Pokemon I should talk about next, an evolutionary line, or you want to answer any of my questions, or you have a different subject you'd like me to speak about, 
please comment. And as always, if you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Palm out.